we value you, Lord. We pour our hearts out to you today, Lord. May you come, may you be glorified with us, Lord God, just responding to you with our hearts. We give you an offering today of our hearts. Let our hearts be right with you today, God. Thank you for ripping up and tearing up every hindrance, every distraction, every hurt, and healing our hearts today. Healing our hearts today. We bless you today, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Praise God. Give the Lord a praise. Praise God. Praise God. How many glad you came to church? Praise God. How many glad you came to church? Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to... We're going to talk about one principle God gave me about teamwork. And you're on God's team. You're on God's Super Bowl team. You're on God's winning team. You're on God's family. That's the family you're in. You're in the family of God. Amen? Amen. And that's who you are. You're a part of the, the, the family of God. You're a son and daughter of God. You're called. You're chosen. Praise God. I have Benita coming out. I want her to put some paint on my face. I want to get into the spirit. I want to get in the spirit of winning today. I want to get in the spirit of overcoming today. I want to get in the spirit, praise God, of overflowing. Benita's my artist. She paints pictures and paints all types of things. So I told her, come paint my face. Okay, thanks, Paul. Praise God, right? Right, get in the spirit of it, right? Get, get in the spirit of it. You're ready to fight. You're ready to do battle. You're ready to win. You came to win. You came to be an overcomer. Well, that's who we are in Christ. And whether your team's in the Super Bowl like mine or not, that's okay, all right? We love one another. We have a good spirit. It's okay if you're different. It's okay if you're different. I'm not upset or mad about that. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I love you in Jesus' name. See, that, that's, what, that's what makes the house of God. That's what makes the house of God is the family of God is love. That's what makes us the house of God. That's what makes us the family of God. It makes us love one another we we receive from one another we receive from one another we we flow with one another praise god now you can't withhold that love you got to release the love back that's a healthy relationship when it's two ways when it's one way it's unhealthy and it's selfish, and it's codependent. But you got to get in a flow with one another. And the Bible says that the world will know that we are the family of God by our love for one another. They will know, the world will know that we're disciples of Christ by our love for one another. We need to love one another first. We need to love one another first. If you know of a need of a brother or sister uh, in this body, you, you are to meet that need. You are to meet that need. You are to go and pour that need out. Or if you know somebody that has a need, to tell somebody that has the need that, that you know can meet that need to go minister to that person. The Bible says that to minister to your family first. To minister to your family first. It's family first. Before you send out a text, send out a family first text. Send out a text to your family first. Send out a scripture verse or an encouraging word first to your family, your, 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 your biological family. Then after that, now it's the family of God. Now we minister to one another and we pour into one another as the family of God. Amen? Praise God. My son bought me this shirt because he said, Dad, your other one's got holes in it. It was 16 and 0, perfect regular season. And I had that for so many years. It was burning out, burning holes through it from cheering. And when my family gets together, 
we're, we're, we're screaming and yelling and shouting at the TV. When my family and my brothers got together, we'd be screaming and we'd be shouting. And so my son put that on the back for me. Praise God. So thank you, James. Praise God. You can hold it. Praise God. So we, we, he put my college baseball number on it, my number in college. So uh, number seven. So the shirt means a lot to me, James. Thank you. It was thoughtful. Thoughtful. Thank you. I want to give you one principle today for you to walk away with. I want to give you one principle. And Jesus was always talking in parables and he was talking with modern day illustrations and, and so that people could grasp spiritual truth through modern day illustrations. I want to give you the scripture verse, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Acts 2, I want to give you one word, and this is kind of the word that God's been ministering to my heart that we need to see go through this body and permeate through our lives and practice. It's called the, the word fellowship, but the word family. January and February, we're talking about the vision here. Prayer, family, equipping missions. Today's about family. Today's about family and carrying the family spirit. Carrying a family spirit where you take care of one another. Amen? Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And they all continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Underline that in your Bible, fellowship. Underline that word in your Bible. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. They took care of one another. They took care of one another. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking a bread from house to house. Say house to house. House to house fellowship. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Verse 42 and 46 says that they uh, met uh, in houses, breaking bread house to house, eating food with gladness and simplicity of heart. And they had fellowship uh, with one another. They had fellowship with one another. That's the Greek word koinonia. It's the Greek word for intimate conversation. It, it's, the, it's the Greek word for sharing your heart with another one. It, it's the Greek word for connecting in the spirit. It's more than a football game. It's more than a baseball game. It's more than, a, it's more than watching a movie, a Hallmark movie or a TV show. It's you sharing your heart with another believer and that believer sharing their heart with you and you praying with one another. That's, that's fellowship. That's biblical fellowship. And we need to bring, uh, the, the Lord told me to bring the meal back into the house of God. Bring the table back into the house of God. Bring the eating back into the house of God. Bring the fellowship around the table back into the house of God. Amen? We get so busy running here and running there and, and, and working and doing things that we neglect one another. We neglect one another. But the Bible says, love one another. Pray for one another. Encourage one another. Uh, speak to one another, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. The Bible is all about the one another's. The Bible is all about me and you speaking into one another's lives and encouraging one another in the things of God. Don't get so busy that you don't spend time in fellowship with other believers. You, you're, on, you're on God's team. You're on God's team and you're in God's family. And you, I read the back of the book, and we win. You're a winner. You're a winner in Jesus' name. You're a winner. Praise God. You're an overcomer in Jesus' name. And the, the Lord gave me this illustration. Uh, praise God. So I need 12 guys. Julio, come on up here. Stand on my side. Pastor Paul, I'm right there. Praise God. 
Brother Scott, James, go right there. Aaron, uh, yeah, you can bring the football, that's fine. Aaron, <laughs> Brother Seraphim, Brother Charlie Ish, come on up here. Freddie and James. Praise God. I'm going to give you this illustration and then we're going to close. This is the illustration the Spirit gave me two weeks ago. So you have you have 11 guys here. You have you have 11 guys here, and we're we're all doing our own thing. We're all busy. We're all busy. We're all working. We all have to provide for our families. We all we all have to do these things in the in the natural uh, to 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 uh, to be responsible. Amen. And we get busy. Amen. But we have to take time to huddle. We have to take time to huddle and fellowship together with one another. Guys, huddle it in. Bring it in. Guys, bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Guys, bring it in. Bring it in. Okay, Gronk, bring it in. Okay. Now, now this this represents this represents fellowship. This represents getting getting the game plan. This represents leaning in and huddling and encouraging one another. This represents us having one another's backs. Amen. This represents us knowing our plan. Knowing our play, knowing our position. Where we're to play. And how we're gonna we're gonna win we're gonna win in this game called life. We're gonna win in this game called life because we're in fellowship yes. with one another and we're fighting for one another in the power of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. On the count of three, we're gonna clap our hands and say Amen. Okay, because we're the victors. Because we're the victors. We are the victors. We're the victors, right, guys? That's right. We're, we're the, the victors. we're the victors. We're the victors. Scott, we're the victors. We're the victors. One, two, three. Amen. Amen. Break. Break. Right. Seraphim, I'll call you up and Seraphim, come on up and share that. That was during worship. I wanted you to share that. And so I, I have one thought to give you on that. This vision goes with it. Blessings to everybody. As we were in the middle of the worship, and as Pastor uh, Verna read the vision that somebody else had had uh, this that the Lord showed me went with it and it was a huge uh, canvas beautiful white a pair of hands came and started drawing on it uh, as the painting started taking shape uh, it, it, it came in more than 3D it, it was almost 4D and if you don't know what 4D is it, it encompasses time and space this became real and the scene was total darkness all around but in the middle of the picture there were three holding hands and dancing you could see just barely underneath them there were waters that were moving back and forth they were not touching they were just like barely above it from them there was emanating so much light that it was something supernatural almost as if you were in a bonfire and the little sparks were coming up but these sparks started forming a hurricane a whirlwind a fire that was lifting up from them all of a sudden i saw a pair of hands grab somebody and put them in the middle of those three and that person whoever he or she was was in total harmony and total peace there was a storm raging around them but they were fine the three that were there were protecting were the center of that person's life and whatever you are going through I want you to understand God has you in the middle of the storm and even the fire may be all around you it ain't going to touch you the Lord told me also to let you know as we made that declaration that, that we made with Pastor Ida there's going to be testimonies the Lord told me there's going to be mortgages being paid off. 
people that were ready to give up their businesses because they were like, I don't know if I can make this last, supernaturally are going to receive what they need to receive to be able to make their business not thrive, but they're not going to fold. People are going to get phone calls that are going to drive you crazy because you're going to say, where did this come from? Listen, you made the, the, the statement, think about what you say. You said, I'm going to have new jobs. And people are going to say, you apply for this job, and we want you to know that we want you for this job. When can you start it? You're going to say, but I did not apply for this job. But the jobs are going to be coming for you. Right. You're going to literally be getting those checks in the mail. Hello. Supernatural things are going to happen for you because you are in the center of God's perfect will. And even though the storm is raging around you, you're part of the team. And he is the quarterback. He's got you. Hallelujah. Thank you, prophet. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Threes. Threes. God's putting together the teams. He's putting together the anointing. He's putting together the unity. Jesus had the three. Jesus had the 12. Jesus had the 72. And that threefold cord is not quickly broken. God's lining you up with fellowship teams that are going to carry you into your new season. Amen. Get ready. The new fellowship teams are coming. That, that word fellowship in the Bible is, is it, it, mean, it means come together. It, it means to, to get connected. It means to connect. It means to stop being disconnected. It means to connect with one another and connect with one other believer, one other uh, sister, one other brother, one other prayer partner. It's where you connect with one another and where you take time to lean in to the huddle. Take time to lean in. Take time to lean in and listen. Take time to lean in and listen you know, when the Patriots were playing two weeks ago, that's where I got this revelation that the, the stadium in Kansas City is the second loudest stadium in the NFL. The first one is Seattle. It's the loudest, the way it's architecturally made, and the, 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 the noise of the fans is deafening on the field. It's deafening on the field. And so Kansas City's number two. So when, when the Patriots huddled, they had a huddle, and then they had to lean in, and they had to listen. You got to take time to huddle and lean in. You got to take some time to huddle and lean in and listen to one another. Take some time to huddle and lean in. You know what? When you do that, you're going to overcome the deafening voice of the world. The deafening voice of the world. The world's voice that makes you lukewarm. The world's voice that makes you lethargic. The world's voice that confuses you. The world's voice that, that makes you get out of balance and get out of step. It deafens it when you lean into one another. Take time to lean into one another. Take time in 2019. Make it your fellowship year. Make it your year where I am going to be a person that has fellowship with one another. I'm going to fellowship with another believer. I'm going to fellowship in a small group. Our equip classes starting next week. Get into the equip classes. Fellowship with one another. Take time to lean in. There's a lot of voices out there. There's a lot of distractions out there. You've got to learn how to shut them all out and lean into the Holy Spirit voice. And when you do that, when you do that, you're going to know your play and you're going to be effective in the world. Amen. You're going to be effective in your family. You're going to be effective what God's called you to do. Amen? Uh, Acts 20, 20 says they met from house to house. Acts uh, 2, 36 says they met house to house. Uh, God is preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Psalm 23 says God is placing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God is laying out a banqueting table for you to eat in the midst of the trials. In the midst of the storm, God is giving you a banquet of his love. He's giving you a banquet of his forgiveness. He's giving you a banquet of his joy. He's giving you a banquet of everything you need in this life 
pertaining to life and godliness, he's given it to you. He's preparing a table before you. Bring the table back into your house. Anoint your table. Anoint your table. Anoint your dining room table. Anoint your kitchen table. Anoint your table and declare over this table there will be healings. Over this table there will be deliverances. Over this table uh, there will be anointing breakthroughs. Over this table people will be set free. Over this table, over this table, when people sit around it, there'll be moves of the Spirit. Over this table. Praise God. Pastor Jessica, Pastor Elias started doing that. Pastor Paul started doing that. I started doing that. Anoint your table. And then invite one other family over to eat with you at your table. And while you're eating at your table, and after you eat with gladness and simplicity of heart, then you talk and share with one another. And you pray with one another and breakthroughs are going to occur. The, the, those streams of light, the, the, the embers, the by small groups, this is how this church is going to impact the city of Waterbury and beyond. Fellowship with one another. Tell your neighbor, I need you. I need a fellowship with you. Now you need to connect and pray and see who God would have you connect with in 2019. Amen? You're on God's winning team. You're on God's overcoming team. Praise God. And this year, you're going to be a Super Bowl champion because you're going to be winning souls for Christ. You're going you're gonna to receive the ring. You're going to receive the crown because he that wins souls is wise. Amen. Let's focus this year on fellowshipping with one another and creating that family atmosphere with one another, taking care of one another, loving one another, forgiving one another. Amen. Would you bow your head with me? Would you bow your head with me?